In this video, we're going to recover some GCE instances using our backups in Google Cloud Backup and DR. In the previous video, you would have seen me onboard the Prod1 GCE instance. In this case, what I've done is go backup and recover and chosen the recover option. I've set some filters to make my life a little easier. The backup plan is set to manage. In other words, I'm only showing instances that are currently being backed up and the application type set to GCE instance. And I've also even added a filter so that I can definitely get straight to the one that I'm interested in. Uh, Prod1 was the one that we're, running, we're currently running backups on. So I'm going to hit next. In this example, you can see I've only got a couple of images because I only just started backing this instance up. So in fact, none of the scheduled backups that should have run once a day are here. Uh, if this was a regular situation, I would have at least seven images going back at least seven days. But that's fine. We're going to select the image we're interested in. <clears throat> we have a couple of choices here. We can choose Mount or we can choose Restore. We could also choose Manage Expiration, by the way, if we wanted to expire the image uh, early, but that's fine. We're going to choose Mount in this case. When we choose Mount, we get two choices. The first is to mount to an existing GCE instance. There are several drop downs here, but the ones that you're interested in first up is the project name, as in where do you want to mount into? Now, in this case, this service account is actually set to, it's actually been added to two separate projects. So I could mount into either of these projects. Then into what region do you want to mount, into what zone do you want to mount, and to what instance do you want to mount. Now, in this case, Prod1 is the source VM. I could mount to Prod2, which is a different VM in the same project and region. If the disk, if, if the backup consisted of multiple disks, I could choose which disk I want to mount. I hit mount. Now, what, at, what will happen at this point is that a new disk will be created. The snapshot backup will be rehydrated effectively into it. And then that disk will be presented to the GCE instance. So I'm going to hit mount at this point. Now the job will take a little time because this is not an instance mount. What has to happen is the disk has to be made and the data has to be copied out of GCS. Okay, so my job is running. At this point, I can simply sit and wait or I can go to monitor jobs. And what I've done is I've set the job type to mount and the status to running in the filter. So that again, I only have to look at the particular jobs that I'm interested in. So what we can see is that my running mount job has disappeared. And this is a classic example of where the filtering helped me to begin with and is now not helping me. So if I'm going to remove this running um, filter, what I can see is that the most recent mount, which is actually the one that I ran, has finished and has succeeded. The other way I can see this is if I go application manager active mounts, I can see that there is an active mount. And in fact, this is also showing me that the source was prod one, but it's mounted to prod two. At this point, I could talk to the administrator of that host and have them log in and see the new disk. When they're finished, what I can do is right select and do an unmount and delete, which will remove the disk from the instance. By the way, if they want to keep it, I could instead do forget active mount, at which point, it's like we never did it, but they've got the disk and they can continue to use the disk for as long as they want. So I'm going to do an unmount and delete, hit submit, and that disk will be removed. The other thing that I can do instead of mounting to an existing host is to mount to a new host. So again, I'm going to go back up and recover and to the recover option. I'm going to choose prod one. I'm going to choose next. I'm going to select the backup that I'm interested in, and I'm going to select mount. This time, instead of choosing mount to existing GC instance, I'm going to choose mount as new GC instance. Again, the first thing that I need to consider is which project I want to mount into. So one of the things I could do is select a different project. And by doing so, I can mount a instance with the same name as the source, since instance names are unique within a project. Since it's called prod1, I can't mount it as prod1 in the source project unless prod1 has been deleted from the source project. So in this case, I'm going to mount it into a different project. This is the machine type of the source. I can change that. If there was a service account set on the source, in, and I mounted the same project, you'll see that service account. If I mount into a different project and it was the default service account, you'll see that. If there were network tags set, they'll be displayed. If there were labels set, they'll be displayed. Choose the network interfaces. Now, by the way, if you try and mount into a, if you're looking for a subnet and it's not there, it's because you don't have a subnet in that region. So in this case, it's definitely available in Sydney, which is good because that's where I want to mount it. At this point, I hit mount. So again, we're seeing a running job. The job itself will not be instantaneous. It will run for a bit over a minute because uh, it needs to actually create a disk and copy data into the disk. So it won't be what we call an instant mount. There is some copy time required. Okay, the job is completed. And at this point, I can contact the administrator of that project to go and work with the mounted image that's been created in that project. 
When they're done, I have two choices. From active mount, what I can do is I can right select and forget the active mount because they want to continue to use prod one continuously. Or if they don't want to retain it and they're happy for me to delete it, I can delete it from here. And the job is now in progress. Final thing to consider is restore. I again select the point in time that I'm interested in, but instead of selecting mount, I now choose restore. The restore options are shown and they're fairly simple. If the instance has multiple disks, you can choose which of the disks you want to restore. So you could choose to not restore the boot drive if it's a database drive. Uh, you can update the source labels and network tags from the backup uh, to bring the instance back to what it was. Uh, and when we're ready, we hit, re hit restore. You will get a prompt, which you have to type data loss, at which point I hit confirm and the job submits.